and Malcolm Middleton rifling through the vinyl down at Road Records in Dublin. We asked them some pertinent questions about their last album, The Red Thread. Four albums down the line, how do you feel you've like, developed like, musically as a band? Like since like the first big weekend. I think as a band we've learned to play music. <laughs> Maybe the first couple of records were like practice shots. But uh, the album's good, it's definitely our best. Yeah. So if you listen back to like Philophobia, I mean, do you kind of hear all the things that all the mistakes you felt you've made now or because that's a, I think that's a great record. Um, I haven't listened to it since it came out. It's not one that I would listen to either. I listened to the first one, because I think the first one's funny. I was listening to it recently and I was absolutely crying my laughter. But, um, and and I, it's funny in a good sense, it was intended to be funny. But um, I don't really listen to the old ones, I don't even listen to the Red Thread. It's, um, it's, when you play the songs every night, the last thing you want to do when you go home is put on your record. Sit by me silently and brush my beard. No Mr. Mopo from the bed today. Uh, have you actually, I mean, have you actually moved on in terms of like writing, writing a new record? Uh, there has been recent events which have led me to be uh, inspired to write new stuff. So I'm, I'm very excited about making a record again. So uh, it's, um, it's in the works as we speak. Okay. I can hazard a guess what those events are, but I won't probe you any further in the mind. It's just the usual tales of uh, sexual misadventure and stuff like that. <laughs> Recently we've been somewhat volatile. The previous album, uh, Elephant Shoe, was released on, on Go Beef, which was kind of a bit of a corporate step up for you boys. Uh, um, you're subsequently back on Chemical Underground. Uh, are you happy to be back back home, so to speak? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. It's, um, it's been a, a joy from the moment we uh, went back. Although we still haven't signed a contract, but... Um, we did that. <laughs> the last time we were there, we never signed a contract until the day we were leaving. I think so. Um, it's a very relaxed atmosphere, very much like a family, and um, they're very good friends. And um, I can I can trust them to do the best job. Yeah. And Malcolm, you've kind of tasted both worlds. You've tasted the kind of major level thing and, and, and the independent thing. And yeah. what's the benefit of being on, being on an independent now? Uh, well, for us and Chemical and Grin, it's basically the people who run the label do it for the love of music, not for like making money. And also, they're in a band, Delgados, so they know what a band's needs are, and so they're it's it's brilliant, you know. Like the when we run Gobi, like uh, we just had all these businessmen working for us who had no idea about music or what we were wanting to do. Why did you sign with Gobi? I mean, what was the kind of, what was the attraction? Just because we could, I think, I mean, we had um, dreams of uh, selling more records globally, but exactly the opposite happened. They didn't release the record in several territories. It took about a year to come out in America, and um, it's, it was an absolute disgrace. And, you know, I mean, you know, we, we certainly aren't rich because of it, but we, we made some money, so, and, um, you know, it was an opportunity, I think, anyone should have, have taken at the time. And, I mean, uh, Chemical Underground encouraged us to do it. They were very supportive of us leaving and um, trying something new. I think the thing as well, the type of band we are, if someone comes along and offers us something, we're going to take it. They sort of see you as a kind of a breakthrough artist. They see you kind of get into the top 40 or anything like that. I, I don't. It's difficult to say. They, I mean, the contract we had uh, gave us complete control over everything. So um, I don't think they intended to shape us in any way. But I don't think they expected the record that they got. Because uh, uh, to be fair, I, it probably was our most difficult record from a, a marketing point of view. It's not. Um, it certainly isn't the Beach Boys. <laughs> but um, I, no, I don't think they even thought about that. I think they were genuinely interested in uh, the first two albums 
and um, I think they became disinterested when we made the third. <laughs> focus on the mood of the music, which is generally quite down. Um, do you think that that sort of uh, shrouds other aspects of the dimensions of the music? Maybe even just the humour and the lyrics, or, or you know, the um, actual playing instrumentation? I think it does for people who don't really pay attention. I mean, the, everything's there. For, if you want to listen to it, you, you can get everything, I think. The problem with um, uh, a lot of people who buy records, or no buy records, sorry, who uh, don't buy records, I should say, um, they don't really give music enough attention and um, you know they tend to make presumptions because it's of a certain tempo and a, a certain atmosphere so um, you know I think it, it probably does uh, uh, put certain people off but it's the people that are not interested in, in buying their records anyway. I think music's slow but I personally think it's downbeat I mean most of the tunes have like <coughs> uplifting parts and like Aidan's lyrics have happy endings so. I think one of the misconceptions, one of the misconceptions is that you know, it's depressing because it's slow. But on the Mad for Sadness, there's a, the, the live album you released a couple of years back. There was a version of, uh, I think it was Girls, Girls of Summer, uh, that kind of wigs out uh, at the end of it and there's really, really good beats on it and stuff like that. Have you been tempted to make a record like in, employing a lot more of that kind of, uh, of that element, that electronic element? Um, I think so. It's difficult to say. I've, it's something that I've always wanted to explore, but with a lot of the stuff I've been listening to recently, I'm, so I'm torn between attempting new things like that or going back to basics and getting back to the, you know, the, the, the real band sound. I think the point of that as well is we're not, we could do that but it wouldn't be our strap. We're not like experts at that or ex experts at anything but the fact that we combine music that we like is different from like going out and trying to make an all out electronic record. I mean, the fact that we have like, like drum machines with acoustic guitars is like far more like, unique. There's loads of things we're going to do, I think. And Malcolm's got stuff, has his own album to do as well, so it's going to be a very, very busy time. <laughs>